Well, welcome back. So, in the first video, we unboxed the raw welder, the MIG 200 MI. Um, nice looking bit of kit, as you can see. Doesn't take up too much space on the bench. Um, it's about the sort of size I thought it was going to be. So, it looks good. Um, so, I've not done anything with it really other than taking it out of the packaging, showed you what was in it. Um, all the stuff's here. I've undone all the clips and took all the packaging off, all the bits and pieces. We've got the gas here, We've got the welding wire. I went for a 0.8mm um, welding wire uh, just because that's what it said. The, the bobbin in there will do a 0 0.8. It was, I was unsure whether it would do 0 0.6 as well. I've had a look since the last video and it's it's a reversible thing I'll show you in a minute um, and it'll take 0 0.8 and 0.6 mil wire I've got 0.8 I thought it'll do the do the job for what we need so we've got the argon got the wire um, the cables and everything here are just what was in the packaging that I showed you in the last video I have took the end off the the welding torch the protective cap that was on there and you can just see, if I try not to spill my brew, you can just see you've got a couple of little connections on there and that's why it looks a bit weird. I assume one's, one's sort of your, your sw two of them are your switch wires for the switch on the gun, one will push your gas through and the other one will push the, the welding wire through. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, so since the last video I couldn't really do much with it um, because using a disposable bottle um, the, the the fitment on the back of the, the machine is uh, like a barbed fitment and it's a, I think it was six mil barb on the back it has got a coupling on it so you can take that off and I assume if you're using like a full-size bottle your regulator and then your hose from your regulator will screw straight into that I've not measured it but I'll double check that and probably put that in the next video um, so what you end up with basically is 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 this here that uh, that barbed fitting is on and that sort of thread you can sort of see um, so what I had to do was order a regulator um, some pipe piping for the disposable bottle and then I've just botched together this little coupling bit of tubing run the the tube from the regulator it goes all the way down here into the barb uh, and then that's on pretty tight and I've just used a Jubilee clip just to hold that in place stop any gas escaping back up here or stop the hose popping out uh, on its own um, I ordered this kit again off Amazon or eBay one of the two uh, 15 quid came with the, the regulator and the hose and then these bits I had a jubilee clip and a bit of hose knocking around um, and then obviously that bit came on the welder itself cobbled that together and that should be should be good to go so what I'm gonna do is get the um, get this all rigged up try and get some wire into it get it powered up and see what that entails should be pretty straightforward I've had to read through the instructions it doesn't look too tricky um, so we'll leave that for a second so um, you might remember in the first video I was I'd, um, put the link wire in between these two so in the manual it does show you on uh, on the first page if you're reading the instructions um, you've got your, your bits and bobs there next page sorry so page five have you got you've got your gas and sorry gas and gasless setups so it does say in the side here mig mag welding uh, gas so number four gas welding connect the gas supply to the gas supply nozzle via regulating valve connect the link cable the short one between the link cable terminal and the positive terminal so for gas welding we're going to put the link in to the positive from there click that in and then in there and that's it 
So that's your setup for gas, using gas. Which, like I say, that's what we want to be doing. Um, just get a nice clean weld. So then the next one is really simple. Got your negative lead, nice big clip on it. And again, your uh, little connection there goes into there. Turn it, make sure that's in. Job done. So what I'm going to do for the time being, just to keep this out of the way, is I'm going to tuck that under there, and I'm just going to clamp it onto um, the bolt that is holding the vice on. There we go. Now I did uh, another video quickly showing what I've done for the for my little welding bench area. So I've got my vice on there. I've cleaned the bottom of the vice up. So that's got good contact between the vice and the, the metal plate underneath it. Bolted it all down. It's not going anywhere. It's all nice and sturdy. So that should be good to go. We've moved this around and as you can see, it's a bit later in the day. It's got a bit warmer. Got my lovely uh, Made Motorsport t-shirt on. Um, and yeah, so we've, uh, we've moved the welder around so we can see inside. So it's two clips. Hold the door. And inside, there we go. Now I hope you can see this all right. I'm trying to use my uh, phone as a viewfinder, and we've got a light rigged up so because obviously, with it all being black inside, it's quite dark. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so I hope, hope you can see all right in there. So inside, I've just put the, the bag of bits um, and the lid off the welding torch that's the protector that comes on it. So I'll just move them out of the way. So as you can see, we've got the, the spool um, holder, reel holder here, and then this is your, your your motor for your wire feed and your roller tensioner, and this is where the, the wire will go in. Um, you've got a few bits of electronics up in the top here that you can't see in two of the buzz bars. Obviously you want to be careful, make sure if you're opening this it's unplugged, don't want those to be live, you get a hell of a belt off them. And then the red button. Um, which is for feeding feeding the wire through okay so um, we've got the roller wire that picks up like I said it's a 0.8 mil um, that's, that's a, like a 1 kilo roll it says net weight's 0.7 kilos I'm just going to take that sticker off there and move it down a bit so that it's not going to be like flapping around in there. So it's got a bit of brown tape on. Let's get that off. Get shut of that. And then we should have. There we go. There's your start of your wire. And what I should have done was thought ahead and got some snips ready for doing this. Let me just grab my snips out of my toolbox. So. What I want to do is just, <coughs> I'm just going to snip that end off. And we've got a nice, clip, nice straight end. Then, so the rest of that twang. Careful of that. So we'll undo this locking nut. Take off the spring and the spool retainer. I imagine if you're using like a really small spool, narrow spool, you could put that on the other way. But it sort of sits on. You can just see it's sort of uh, It's got two flat sides, so that goes on and doesn't move. And there's a bit of adjustment in there. Spring for the pretension, and obviously your lock nut to keep it all in place. So obviously we want this positioned so that the wire. Oh, I'm making a right mess already. Let's try and get that pulled back in. The wire is going to go through that way. Okay. So slide that on. And try and roll some of that back. And luckily, most of this will get used up feeding through into the uh, through the pipe, working into the torch itself. And while we're at it, I'm just going to nudge that through just so it's not flying around everywhere. Just keeping hold of that. Put the thingy on there. 
need three pairs of hands for this. If I let go of that, it's going to twang back. Oh, maybe should have done that later. <laughs> Get that on there. So the lesson is, undo your wire after you've put this on. Right. So it doesn't have to be super tight, but that's, that's done the job. Right. Let's try and rescue some of this insanity. So yeah, don't undo that until you've got the spool on, because that was a pain in the bum. Right, so with that, I'll keep one hand on that. So what we want to do next, flick that down, that'll come up, or you could do it in a slightly more controlled manner than I did. Pull that down, little bearing wheel comes up, you can see you've got your, where you your wire is going to run over on there. This black bit here is a little knob that you can take off. I'll just show you on here as well. Whilst we've got a second, take that one off, and then that is your wheel, your guide. So you've got 0.6 on that side. Point eight on that side. So obviously you want your whichever size wire you're using, you want that on the inside, and that's where your your welding wire is going to run over. So stick that on, finger tight, wire into there. I'm just going to leave this at standard settings. On the the pretensioner. Let's see if we can get that through there. Is it bending up out of the way? Just give that a bit of a straighten out. There we go. So you see, it's come through there. Just want to nudge it into there. Just feed it in a little bit. Tensioner down. Put your bearing down. That back up. And there should be all right so with that in place you want to just check that it will feed through but before we do that I'm going to put the um, tell you what we'll put the gas on um, and then no no we'll put the welding torch on and then we can get this fed through Welding torch again, like I say, a couple of uh, connections in there, switch wires, gas, and your, your wire feed, and a big threaded knurled nut on there. So if we shut that over, and then if I move this around, <coughs> so you want to line up all your, your pins, Give it a wiggle round till it pushes in. Go. There we go. There 
we go. That's not going anywhere. We've got so we've got the torch plugged in. We've got the torch here. So we're gonna open the side up. And like I say, we're gonna have to power it up to feed the wire through. Just be careful when you're doing this. Don't get your arms too close to the buzz bars. Give yourself a belt. So we'll get the plug. Get some mains on. Voltage reading, power lights on. And there we go. So, all we're doing at the minute is just getting the wire feed through. So, let's give that button a, a try. There we go. And like I was saying, you want to try and keep your keep your cable as smooth a radius as possible, so it'll feed through properly. Oh no, we've got a tangle. Thought that might. There we go, so a bit of a tangle, so definitely take the cover off after you put your spool on. Spool on first, then take your tape off, making sure you keep hold of the end, take your end out, snip the end off and then feed that through. So I've caused myself a bit of a tangle there, so I'm just going to keep an eye on, keep my hand on and just feed this through, little bit by little bit make sure we don't get any tangles until we've got through this section of tangled up wire and got down to the smooth bits and we've got the welding torch just on the floor next to me I'm just keeping an eye for when the, when the wire feeds through I think we're getting to the end of the tangle now. Oh, it takes a lot. You know, I suppose it's a, it's a two metre lead on it or something. Okay, so it's sticking a little bit there for some reason. What's just increase the tension on it. Should have probably took the uh, should have probably took the end out first. And that it's stuck in there. So this is where this handy pack of tools comes in. So the the shielding end just sort of pushes and pulls off. So then there's the little end on there, is it? No, look, yeah, that one there goes over the end you'll see there's two flat sides and then undo that yeah there we go there we 
go. We have wire. Slide that over. Making sure you don't press the button and give that a nip up. Shroud back on. So checking that, yep. Yeah. The spool's looking a bit neater now. What I'll do, just turn that off. Has like an overrun for a fan overrun for a minute just to make sure it's not going to overheat. Stick me like little spanner back in there. Because that come in really handy. So I'm just going to check. The wire's not got any more tangles in, which it hasn't. We'll put a little bit more tension on there. back to where that was. So that is that. Like I said earlier, the, the hinges on this is something that people have said in all sorts of video, in the, the videos from America that I've seen and also the, the guy that I linked to um, in the other video said the hinges weren't very good. I mean you can see the door doesn't line up perfect but what do you want for a, for a cheap welder? So, we've now got welding wire out of the end here, so I'm just going to get my snips, just take a bit off, leaving a 15mm out the end, and then what we'll do, I'll just jig this all around again, so we can see the back, and get the gas on, and then I might have to put my jumper on, brave the heat and get a weld or two done. So here we are at the back end of the welder. We've got our mains cable, on off switch, some strange European 230 volt outlet. Um, and then the important bit, the gas supply. So let's have a quick look. It's about so you can get my about 12 mil across so I assume that will be a sort of standard 12 mil gas fitting that goes on there as I say not a welder don't profess to be one that's why I'm doing this video and um, sort of show people it's not that hard to do um, and hopefully shed a bit of light on this thing as well because there's not many videos out there about these. Like I say, I managed to find one. Um, so I'll be number two. Anyway, so that's the back end. So we've got over here on the little bench of spare bits. We've got the gas regulator, the hose, it's a push fit connection on the, onto the hose. I ran the hose through up to the barb and then the black piping with the Jubilee clip on just to hold it in place. Looks a bit rough and ready, but should do the job. So it's just a case of stick that bad boy on there, tighten him down. It's like a 15 milli spanner. Give it a cinch up. Make sure that's on nice and tight, and that's that ready to go. Okay, so we've got. Got the welder set up, got everything plugged in as it should be. The wires and on the spool and is out at the end. So what I'm gonna do is just set up a piece of sheet sheet steel uh, about half a mil thick, something like that. Um it's about the same thickness of the, the stuff on the car that I'm gonna be working on, so it'd be perfect to do a couple of practice welds down here. Um, I've just set up a, a magnet in the vise so that I can just stick, stick it on there and it shouldn't. I might stick another magnet in there, try and keep it all keep it all uh, from moving around while I'm 
I'm trying to play with it. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Stick it in there. So we'll just see what, what sort of penetration it gets and everything. So all I'm going to do, seeing as we're welding it on the vise, in fact I could probably push them over there, press that on there, and then just straight on it. Okay, so there we go. So we've got that set up, we've got everything in place. So we need to put some gas on. Now, obviously, be careful when you careful when you're putting these gas bottles on. Keep that little uh, cap up there, just in case you do get any discharge whilst you're putting it on. It can be a bit cold when they, if the gas escapes, so plonk that. put a set of gloves on. I'm just going to screw it in. Hopefully, we'll be all right. Like that. So, keep, keep the gloves on. So that's in the off position. I'll move my mask. So the gas bottle down the back there, out of the way, so I can get to the get to the nozzle, but I'm not spraying it with weld or rolling around getting in the way clean work work area that's what you want so we've got everything set up got the gas bottle plumbed in got the mains in and everything got my gloves got my lid metal's not going anywhere let's get the mains on get the gas turned on let's see if we can at least put a weld in now just a second ago I had a quick recap of um, Joshua the Lyles Delisle something like that I'll do a quick recap of his video. Um, he was playing around with the settings on this. He was using a bit thicker steel um, and he was using higher settings. So what I've dialed back to is set, uh, four on the wire speed and four on the voltage. So we'll see what that does and we'll work up from there, shall we? Right, I suppose no time like the present. Let's get stuck in. I'm going to stand up for doing this, just uh, don't want any crap on my legs or anything. Okay, oh, a bit nervous. First time I've used it, used a welder for a while. Let's have a look, hopefully, this works. I think that's pretty good for uh, for a start. Let's just try doing. Um, a little bit less. We'll go for three and three. So that's uh, sat a bit higher, not got the, the penetration of the first one, 
and that you can see it sat a lot higher. So I think that first one was pretty much spot on. So if we go back to four and four, um, let me just try running a little bit of a bit of a longer weld, just a little bit quicker. side to side again. them felt right so you're going right through which is the main thing you just try doing um, the quick tack let's just try and Let that cool down a second. Let's turn the gas off. So there we have it. Um, it's cooled down a little bit now, but tap welds. That way. So that was our first one, second, third, and fourth. So it started off and got worse. So a bit of practice. We'll get that up to speed. But, I mean, that tack weld isn't going anywhere, is it? So, a little bit of penetration on that side, penetration on that side. So that looks to me like a good solid weld. So, if you know how to weld, and you've watched this and I'm talking out my backside leave us a comment um, you can contact me on, via Made Motorsport or on uh, Instagram or Facebook uh, or Alan A. Pone on uh, Instagram and Alan Easton on Facebook um, leave us some comments let me know what you think um, do you want to see me doing a bit more with this welder um, any little tips, tricks, things I need, I love a gadget, uh, let me know. Click like and subscribe, as all the kids say. And yeah, hopefully next time we shall be trying to get some work done on the car. Received my uh, patch panel through the post from Dan Whitey, DW Engineering. It's a pretty much exact replica of what's in the car um, handmade hand makes these so if you need any patch panels for 106 or a saxo give him a shout lovely guy um, all stuff sent next day it's fantastic bit of kit good bit of workmanship so we'll get this welded in soon thanks for watching again um, hope this has been informative and I shall see you soon cheers